think of the all the structures of the larynx epiglottis are epiglottic cord also vocal cord and also the vocal cord again because there is a subglottis narrowing here you will find the steeple sign also positive in case of acute laryngo tracheo bronchitis so the treatment of the acute laryngo tracheo bronchitis is first you have to hospitalize the patient and particularly in the intensive children care unit iccu i and neonatal or whatever it may be children you have to admit in icu give them plenty of iv fluids as much required and also give them specific antibiotic if you send for culture and sensitivity or sometimes we starts with a broad spectrum antibiotic like uh, our generation of the cephalosporins humidification of the air has to be done and we will add the mucolytics like what you know bromhexin is available so that the crusts and secretions will come out you have to add oxygen inhalation whenever there is a decrease in the oxygen saturation here the use of iv steroids are very important because there is a edema there is a narrowing of the laryngeal or glottic inlet and subglottis it is uh, the steroids will give good response that's why we give even sometimes iv steroids also if strider increases we have to do the tracheostomy this is very common which i told you and our ent department is opposite to the pediatrics that is why they constructed the ent opposite to the pediatrics it is sometimes self limiting prognosis is very good nowadays because of having uh, multiple approaches and also the patients are coming in the early stages other specific disorders in acute is the diphtheritic laryngitis you all know only larynx involvement is very rare mostly secondary to the facial diphtheria you find the, the membrane over the tonsils also and this is what we call facial diphtheria this extends lower into the larynx you all know the diphtheria is caused by corini bacterium diphtheria mostly we see this condition between 7 and 10 years age of the patient here the membrane is formed over the surface of the larynx because of the superficial necrosis of the epithelium these patients they complaining of croup and also the hoarseness of the voice and they have a continuous cough at the later stages slowly they may go into strider because of edema or sometimes the membrane slips and obstruct the airway these patients you see the cervical lymphadenitis also associated with this as you all know diphtheria nowadays is very rarely seen because of the children they are taking the diphtheria the vaccine associated with the D polio and and dp diphtheritis and tetanus you are taking vaccine they are taking that's why diphtheria is very rare now in whenever diphtheria comes you are giving dpt as a prophylaxis vaccine but whenever you find and confirm your diagnosis of diphtheria then you have to give the anti toxin about 20000 to 1 lakh units half of the dose in uh, intramuscular and half of the dose as a iv the penicillin and present erythromycin for the drug of choice for the diphtheria the tracheostomy nowadays very very rarely required 
because if there is a strider, sometimes these patients are put under the ventilators. Complications like myocarditis and neuritis is seen in these diphtheric patients. Then coming to the chronic non-specific laryngitis. Chronic exposure to the irritants or sometimes continuous low-grade infection with bacteria or viral can cause this uh, chronic laryngitis. These infective causes as aggravated with the allergy and the voice abuse, particularly mouth breathing, because mouth breathing leads to the dryness and dryness leads to the again possibility of irritation and infection and uh, the consumption of the alcohol and the smoking and another thing recently found is the reflex laryngitis laryngopharyngeal reflex is also one of the cause for the chronic laryngitis mouth breathing because of the overweight nowadays, patients are taking snoring. This is also one of the cause for uh, this chronic laryngitis. These mouth breathing patients, they continuously say, I am having some difficulty in my voice and also feeling like dryness, and sometimes they want to clear the throat briefly. Diffuse type which that's all over the larynx with uh, we are having chronic simple laryngitis hemorrhagic laryngitis laryngeal keratosis and laryngeal cicca pachydermia laryngitis that is what we call acid laryngitis these chronic non-specific laryngitis There is a localized involvement uh, is described into a one we call vocal nodule, another we call vocal polyp, then chronic diffuse laryngitis and chronic hypertrophic laryngitis. Here, uh, these vocal nodules and vocal polyps, sometimes we discuss in the benign lesions, of course, we discuss here. Chronic diffuse laryngitis are having chronic simple laryngitis, chronic hypertrophic, or chronic hemorrhagic laryngitis. All these uh, descriptions are given depending upon the pathology here, what is involved. But uh, as per a clinician, it is uh, only hoarseness uh, they will have and all the common laryngeal symptoms. You are seeing here. This is a normal vocal cords, but here you are seeing a bulky vocal cord and you are seeing some tracheal rings here. This is the perfectly normal vocal cord. See here you are seeing the tracheal rings here. And this is the retinoid, very epiglottic fold. And this is the laryngeal side. Again, this is the retinoids you are seeing. post region. This is another picture. But you are finding a small sulcus for the vocal cord. Small sulcus. Then vocal nodule, this is normally important for you, for both for a four mark question and also for the two mark question. Here you should know the synonym words which people use in the singer nodules. They make you as a singer nodule or a screamer nodule or a hawker's nodule. Whatever uh, word given, don't get confused, it is nothing but a vocal nodule. They are seen at the junction of the anterior one-third 
with the posterior two thirds of the two vocal cords. Here you should uh, keep in mind vocal nodule suckers only on the true vocal cords at the junction of the anterior one third with the posterior two thirds. See, this is the normally the junction here, the normal these vocal nodules will arise. Why this area is only involved? Because there is a maximum vibration and the trauma at the free edge of the true vocal cords occurs in this part. Where, uh, what type of voice? Because of unnatural low tones or prolonged periods with a high intensity can produce. Low tones with prolonged using for long time with high intensity is the cause for the vocal nodule formation here. See here you are seeing uh, vocal nodules. There is one vocal nodule, two vocal nodules. It is a bilateral condition. It doesn't exist uh, as a unilateral, always bilateral. Here you are seeing uh, another vocal nodule. The difference is these are the early and this is the late one. That's why it is more uh, thickened. And you are seeing a nodules like, but here you feel it's a pale white reddish and uh, a little edematous here. This is another picture. Uh, these are all our patients. Uh, you are seeing. This is another picture. Vocal nodules you are seeing bilateral and the specific site that is what is called anterior one third with the posterior two thirds of the vocal cords. The etiology is hyperkinetic phonation and also high pitch voice. Where there is hyper high pitch voice and hyperkinetic phonation, they are prone for this uh, vocal nodule formation. Those who are with basal tone individuals, that means they use uh, a standard basal tone, they are safe, they don't get uh, this uh, vocal nodules. This is what uh, the importance of the speech therapy comes. The overuse of the voice is less problem if you talk in the basal tone because all the professional voice users, particularly the teachers, where there is a disturbance in the classes. Of course, we are going in a online class, but when we're in the class, there is this children, particularly when they make more noise, without knowing, uh, we will increase our uh, pitch and intensity. Basal tone, they will never give any problem. But overuse of voice also is a less problem. If you talk more time in a basal tone, you are in the safe zone. But abuse and misuse of voice is problem. See, when the patient, when, when the patient is there here, somebody is, is at the far distance. If you, without going to him, Simply from here, if you shout with a high pitch and intensity, automatically what will happen? There is a trauma of the vocal cord which leads to the hemorrhage there. That's why this, this is what we call abuse and misuse of voice. Power use will get a less problem. If you talk more time with basal tones, nothing will happen. But you are mostly in the safe zone. But the abuse and misuse, using irregular voice and with a high intensity above the standard of your zone, then the problem arises with vocal line. It affects mostly in the singers. Singers are nowadays, they are very much trained and they know what is their level of pitch and intensity they have to use. And uh, they take care. And particularly the teachers, 
more in the vendors and also in the active children. Children sometimes they go on shout with the other children. Then the problem of the vocal languages are seen even in the children also. It is a localized chronic laryngitis. Already we described it as a localized. Sometimes uh, we put it as a benign lesion also, but uh, nowadays we are putting it because of chronic laryngitis is a localized involvement. The trauma, the maximum trauma at the junction of the anterior one third to the posterior two thirds, leads to subepithelial edema. And also, this hemorrhagic fluid is organized in the rinky space of the vocal parts. The subepithelial edema and also this hemorrhagic fluid is organized in the space, rinky space, which we discussed in the vocal parts. Anatomy. This space is organized. Later, it is added with epithelial hyperplasia, which leads to nodule there. When there is epithelial hyperplasia, nodule formation will occur. The early nodules are pale red in color. They are soft and ready matters. Later, it slowly it turns into a grayish or a white nodule. First, they start with a pale red because the hemorrhage soft and edematous. Later, it turns into grayish and white nodule. When the nodule matures, it forms into a firm nodule due to fibrosis and hyalinization. See, this is what I shown here. The fibrosis and the hyalinization of the vocal nodule leads to a firm nodule here. The surface epithelium sometimes show keratosis and acanthosis. Mostly, vocal nodules are benign. Very, very rarely, they may turn malignant in very, very rarely. The main symptom of this uh, Patients is the hoarseness. That is the first early symptom. That's why the patients, they come early, whenever they observe persistent hoarseness for a period of more than one or four weeks to six weeks. One month. The early this is uh, seen uh, hoarseness uh, also by the singers. And they are using about their natural range. That is what uh, range means. The Sruti, that what the singers, uh, professional voice, or the singers know. Whenever they go above their natural range, the possibility of hoarseness will start. And they feel vocal fatigue. They feel very much tired. And they complain, I am not able to speak for a long time. I, am, I used to practice my singing for more this much hours. Now I am not able to do that like that. They will come. Even uh, we get so many uh, pujaris from the temples also. They also say, sir, I am not able to uh, I mean, uh, pronounce that my mantras for a long time. Slowly it is getting fatigued. This is very, very important. They will tell. And some people, because they struggle for voice, they complain pain in the neck also, some patients. The invent of uh, video stroboscopy, actually, we used to diagnose uh, after indirect laryngoscopic mirrors, the micro laryngoscopy, directly by doing the micro laryngoscopy under anesthesia. But now we are having a stroboscope, video stroboscope, more focused, the movements of the vocal cords can be observed and you can see the clearly the vocal nodules. They appear like uh, congested sometimes, 
are a pale pinhead sized nodules seen at the junction of anterior one third and posterior two third surface vocal cord how do you treat mostly conservative whenever you see a patient first we should uh, make them uh, anxious we tell them it will subside but only the thing is they have to give the absolute voice rest for minimum 2 weeks what do you mean by absolute voice they should whisper also whisper needs more struggle of the muscles that's why we we should they shouldn't whisper also we have to advise them take a paper and pen and uh, whatever you want to communicate you have to write on the paper there is no question of any voice use whisper or any slow voice some people say they say no sir i wanted to i will use only slowly sir no you have to advise them no question of any voice absolute voice rest for two weeks use paper and pen only then the role of the steroids particularly the fluticasone propionate is having uh, now some role to reduce the early not the fibrosed or hyalinized vocal nod reduce but early nodules they will they have good effect that uh, fluticasone propionate inhalation then uh, the question of speech therapy and uh, whenever if the patient doesn't hear you you have to send the patient for speech therapy too that uh, they give a specialized way of uh, after voice rest how to tackle how to manage their profession with their techniques of speech therapy they address it whenever there is a large and long standing nodules which are not subsided by above like enough management we have to advise them surgery what surgery surgery as a, surgery we do the microlaryngeal excision this microlaryngeal excision is done by both with microscope now with a endoscope also people are doing endoscopic microlaryngeal excision or microscopic microlaryngeal excision both techniques can be used whenever we excise these nodules it should be done in the sub epithelial plane as now we are having a microlaryngeal excision technique we will have a broad magnified view of the vocal cord where you can lift the epithelium and take out the sub epithelial tissue of nodule and that gives a very good response when you do this technique there is another technique what you call not using knife you can burn with a laser but laser burning should be very careful you should have much experience in doing that if you burn more it damages damages the membrane membranes of the which leads to the fibrosis and scar formation where the patient will have a permanent coarseness which you cannot uh, recover it back you can't uh, modify that that's why whenever un unless you have a good experience with the laser don't go laser immediately then you should know about the vocal polyp the vocal polyp also almost like vocal nodule it is also a result of vocal abuse and misuse only so provided with allergy and particularly smoking allergy and smoking are two parts polyp formation allergy smoking is a irritant factor which makes uh, allergic mucosa leads to the polyp formation it is seen in the third and fifth decade at years above 50 years 
in men mostly because you i told you know smoking is the a primary cause one of the cause here the most important one is the unilateral as you know vocal nodules are always bilateral this is unilateral mostly sometimes you may see vocal polyps in the two polyps may be seen on the single vocal cord or one polyp in one particular position another polyp in the another position but mostly the polyps arises at the junction of anterior one third with the posterior two thirds of the true vocal cord this is also occurs in the true vocal cord but it is a unilateral when you see a single mass the same junction of one third anterior with the posterior two third it is not the unilateral mass is only vocal cord it is soft and smooth mostly a small peduncle may be there or sometimes you see a sessile mobile small reddish pink or a white mass also there is a edematous stroma present with a dilated blood vessels over that fibrous tissue and the area of hemorrhages also are seen in cut section this is what you see a vocal polyp which is a sessile one you are seeing a vocal polyp here this is another polyp a big polyp unilateral these vocal polyps they have a symptoms of hoarseness of the voice dyspnea sometimes if the polyp is big one they may call dyspnea and diplophonia that mean as a two two speakers are speaking and they what you call bifid voice they may get they may get diplophonia sometimes the suddenly the patient complains of intermittent choking sometimes a polyp when it is a big and pedunculated it may lead up to the strider also very rarely the adult polyp which we see in the 30 to 50 years of age is one of the pre malignant condition you should be always careful treatment is by microlaryngeal excision here also the microflap technique you have to lift the mucosal flap and remove the polyp carefully and this is this gives very good results laser excision also done later you send the patient speech therapy not to get the recurrence the keratosis of the larynx the epithelium will have acanthosis and hyperkeratosis and cellular atypia which goes into the malignant disc keratosis these patients will have a hoarseness they feel to clear the throat often something is stuck in their say complaint and you examine you find a white raised thick patches on the vocal cords keratotic patches it is also a pre malignant condition if you have any suspicion of the malignancy take a biopsy of that whenever the patient is having hoarseness not relieved of the speech therapy you have to treat the patient by doing a stripping in a microlaryngoscopic technique micro laryngeal surgery has to be done which we call stripping of the mucosal waves avoid irritants not and toxic there is a pachydermia laryngitis here the patient when you examine there is a raised smooth nodular or varicose patches 
seen on the posterior part of the vocal cords and interarytenoid area. Posterior part of the vocal cord and interarytenoid area. The epithelial and subepithelial hyperplasia is present. The same hoarseness, dry cough, the complaints will be there. It is also a pre malignant condition we have to observe regularly these patients. This is treated by stripping the same technique. Avoid irritants and also the oxygen. This is a recent uh, diagnosis has come, gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD. Whatever nowadays it is a tough to diagnose GERD, but easy to put the GERD name also for a this is uh, otherwise and called from the, at the laryngeal level, laryngopharyngeal reflux. This condition, it is a condition where the esophageal reflux material comes back into the laryngopharynx. 12% patients with total laryngitis are due to GERD only. Of the 12 patients from Total laryngitis are due to GERD. It is also called globus syringeus. Sometimes people they call it a globus hystericus, also mimics like this. There is a vague throat pain, they complain, some discomfort in the throat and the hoarseness. They can't explain sometimes, they say something going wrong in the throat. Some people, they say, I am having some foreign body in the throat. They want to clear the throat very often. And sometimes they go on coughing, dry cough, which comes because of this uh, GERD. These laryngospasms, I mean GERD, the patient may develop laryngospasms. That is what choking spells. Then into the dysphonia, difficulty in speaking, voice breaks also they may have. They complain what call fatigue even. They have an excessive salivation. Trichopharyngeal spasms may come that leads to dysphagia, difficulty in swallowing. Mimic like a globus is serious. The continuous closed nasal drip which leads to the frequent swallowing. This frequent swallowing, the patient swallows air also, what we call aerophagia. And this aerophagia again leads to the GRD. The air enters into the stomach. Again, by belching, it comes back into the laryngopharynx. And uh, they have a regurgitation of the esophageal contents, stomach contents. There is a science of posterior laryngitis. That means erythenoids and enterarytenoids are involved. They, they, you find congestion and edema appears like velvety mucosa over this erythenoids and enterarytenoid area in the GERD patient. Sometimes they end up with a rinkis edema even. Because of this uh, inflammation of the erythenoids, uh, this granuloma formation can occur over the process, vocal process of the erythenoids. The main investigation nowadays preferable is 24 hours double pH monitoring of pharynx and esophagus at the same time. And we can also examine by micro laryngoscopy. The complication which can give by GERD are chronic laryngitis, already we discussed, posterior glottic stenosis, subglottic stenosis, they end up with subglottic stenosis. They are prone to intubation granuloma because of trauma, because as I told you, there is a mucosal congestion and edema that leads to the trauma and granuloma. They may produce contact ulcers and granuloma. 
and in normal formation. Sometimes they end up with erythroid fixation. The trichoerythroid joint is fixed. Sometimes patient may present with paroxysmal laryngospasms. They complain even childhood asthma. And this condition is also a pre-malignant. They end up with a carcinoma larynx. How do you treat them? Particularly, the first is the diet. We have to spread the diet of the patient in the intermittent times, four hours in between, and ask them to avoid alcohol and the coffee and also the soda also, gaseously. Ask them to weight loss has to be taken care. You have to raise the head end of the bed up. You ask the patient to head side has to be increased. It has to be put some thing to raise the head end of the bed. Not simply putting the pillow doesn't affect. You have to put something below the head end of the bed to raise it. And ask them to take a loose clothes. If you put up a tight clothes, which will not allow for the abdominal distension, that leads to the regurgitation. And give them antacids regularly, three to four times a day, H2 blockers, that is ranitidine, you have to give them twice a day. They have a role. Prokinetic agents, now we are having a levosulfide and also the mosapride. That also, they have a role with the antacids. And omiprazole, twice a day, that is about around 7 a.m. and also the 5 p.m. given in the GRD treatment. Surgery. Whenever there is an obese patient, you have to go with a fundal plication of the stomach or a bariatric surgery. Specific disorders of the larynx, tuberculous laryngitis, 5% are primary, but most of them are secondary to the primary tuberculosis, 95%. It is a scrotum spread disease, goes into the interarytenoid area, erythinoids, posterior part of the vocal cords, laryngeal surface of the epiglottis are affected. It has uh, four stages. The first stage, cataral stage of inflammation, where you find diffuse congestion and edema. In the stage of granulomatous, granuloma is having a, a vascular tubercle with a central caseation and also the peripheral epithelioid cells and Langhan type of Jain cells. Same granuloma which you see with a central caseation with a peripheral epithelioid cells and Langhan type of cells here. Fibrous tissue slowly replaces granulomas unite together. Then you, you find hyperplasia epithelium leads to subepithelial thickening of the thickened ulcers appearance. You can see edema due to secondary lymphatic obstruction, what we call pseudo edema, is seen in epiglottis and erythroids. The third is the ulcerative stage. The nodules ulcerate slowly and secondary infection may develop, which shows ulcers over the, all the areas, posterior part of the larynx and also the laryngeal surface of the epiglottis. The thin mucosa of the vocal process and the epiglottics are involved more with the ulcer. The saccharization stays healing by fibrosis and encapsulation. 
in left guard. This is uh, in the tuberculous laryngitis, where you are seeing uh, involvement of the vocal cords you are seeing here with the tuberculosis. This is unilateral involved and you are seeing here all the congestion of the erythinoids and all. Whenever uh, it is involved, it goes into a turban shape sometimes unilateral condition, you will see the mouse nibbled appearance of the vocal cord. It will show you another one. Bulky erythinoids and the inter-erythinoid fold in mammillations, you will see in the other picture. This history suggestive of pulmonary tuberculosis will be there. Weak voice due to myositis, present, the patient will have an associated hoarseness and they will complain even odinophagia due to exposed nerve ending in the ulcers and also the perichondritis, the patient will have a difficulty or painful swallowing, odinophagia. They will have a painful speech even. Panesthesia and dysphonia and sometimes they will end up with a phonia. Many times the patient may complain hemoptysis. Small amount of red streaks are seen in the scrotum because of ulceration. Strider is a late feature. Whenever there is a subglottic stenosis establishes, then only the strider is seen. Features in the tuberculous laryngitis as I told you, turban epiglottis, epiglottis folds inside. There is a unilateral congestion. Sometimes you will see the bowing of the vocal cords, particularly one vocal cord is bowing. See, this is due to the myositis. The mouse nibbled appearance of the vocal cords, small chips are eaten away in the vocal cords. You find and uh, Pale granulations are seen, they are pale. And the interarytenoid mammillations, which seen in the interarytenoid area, folded mucosa in the interarytenoid area. And sometimes they appear like a mass, what we call a tuberculoma, over the epiglottis or on the erythinoids which will suspect a malignant lesion of the larynx. They slowly change the, what you call, deformed larynx is seen sometimes. Sometimes you will find a stenosis of the glottis, hemoglottis. See here, this is a good a case where, where you are seeing granulation all over the vocal cord and this is a mouth, mouse nibbled appearance of the vocal cord, it is a eaten area and you are seeing a small tuberculosis all over the vocal cord. What are the investigations you like to do? The normal routine investigation which we come at the pulmonary tuberculosis, sportum for AFB we have to send it. X-ray of the chest and lateral view of the neck. The Mantu's test is very important. Then you do the microlaryngoscopy and take a biopsy. Whenever we examine larynx for hoarseness, it is a first thing which we tell for every ENT surgeon. Keep tuberculosis in your mind. Never forget it. Otherwise, you will miss diagnosis. And think about the tuberculosis. There is one condition, tuberculosis existing, which we have to take care. Then, whenever you suspect any granulations or tuberculoma formation or ulcer, 
take a biopsy under microreligial technique. The tuberculosis can coexist sometimes with carcinoma larynx. Whenever you see a pulmonary tuberculosis and uh, there is a mass or some granulation over the vocal cord, don't diagnose immediately that it is a tuberculosis only. That's why you should keep in mind tuberculosis can coexist with a carcinoma of the larynx. We have seen so many cases. They put on the tuberculosis treatment. There is no response. Then they end up with a carcinoma larynx. Whenever you confirm your diagnosis, treat with the anti-tuberculous drugs. You are having rifampicin, ethambutal, pyrogenamide, and then isonaxin. And when, because the patient is having a podinophagia, you can give the laryngeal sprays, anastic sprays, whenever they eat. There is one technique called uh, eating technique. The patient is put on the prone position at the edge of the bed, and uh, his head is bent forwards so that the foot will not touch the posterior part. It goes slowly into the uh, use of apagas. This technique is used in the olden days. And uh, analgesic and antiparitics can be given and also the tracheal. There is one condition called the lupus vulgaris. It is due to the atypical tuberculosis bacteria. This condition will be precipitated where there is an increased host resistance and a decreased bacteria virulence. We are the tubercles are formed, they go into caseation, fibrosis around these tubercles. Mostly the anterior larynx is affected here. The laryngeal surface of the epiglottis and the airy epiglottic folds only. Apart from regular tuberculosis, most of the posterior surface. As I told you, it is a nodular caseation ulceration, fibrosis, psychiatric stages are there. The early stages, it is a painless condition. Sometimes there will not be any symptom at all. You will find on examination yellowish pink discrete nodules, ulcers are sometimes findings of perichondritis. Spontaneous healing with fibrosis may occur in some areas, which will alter the shape. Or sometimes you will see the persistent swelling of the false vocal cords, which has to be treated again with the anti tuberculous drugs. There is other conditions like syphilitic laryngitis. Nowadays, this is also becoming rare because. Uh, Sexually transmit diseases are coming down. This is one condition where there is a chronic craniometers involvement are present. This condition is due to a spirochete called trypanoma pallidum. It has uh, two forms. One is congenital, that is early form. Few months after birth, you will see the edema and perichondritis. A patient may come with the classical snuffles and there is a hepatosphenomegaly will present in the neonates, early form. Late form, that is two to nine years, says you will see the granulations and ulcers of the vocal cords and uh, stenosis with strider, associated interstitial keratitis. Narrow deafness present, anterior bowing of the shins, and also the frontal bossing is observed, Hutchison teeth and saddle nose. These are all congenital syphilitic features. You may see in the tertiary stage, that is, stage of infiltration. Hyperplasia due to nodule formation and stage of granulomas ulceration. In ulcers, the specific one which, which we observe is deep punched out gamma. 
pericondritis in ansum epiglottis and erythroids you find uh, a different white slough like wash leather appearance ulcers are seen sometimes you see the deep punched out gamma in the stage of psychiatrization it ends up with a stenosis of the glottis the clinical features of the hoarseness dyspnea and also the strider you die administered with vdrl tpi tphca and also the wasserman reaction the drug of choice you all know the procaine penicillin 10 days or benzethin penicillin doxycycline when they are sent to for penicillin you can use doxycycline 300 mg per day for 21 days in this syphilitic laryngitis there is another condition called scleroma of the larynx is it continuous with rhinoscleroma of the nose continuous with the rhinoscleroma there is a subglottic swelling which is pale pink in color it is due to klebsiella la rhinoscleromatis the patient may complaining of the hoarseness cough and progressive dyspnea we have to differentiate this condition with malignancy tuberculosis syphilis and also one of the condition leprosy this is also becoming very very rare now the treatment is nothing but we have to excise the excessive mass which you find come across in your airway brachiostomy very rarely may require there is one condition called laryngeus stridulus it is a non infective spasms produced in the muscles of the larynx the voice uh, will change it is seen in the young male children around 4 years of the age particularly in the cold climates winter climates it is due to calcium deficiency which occur due to vitamin d or parathyroid deficiency in this condition the flabby soft tissues of the larynx are sucked in during inspiration and this produces a crowsing strider crowsing strider and cyanosis carpopedal spasms also might be observed in some cases whenever you see carpopedal spasm with this type of strider with calcium deficiency treat the patient with uh, calcium supplements and also the vitamin d supplements thank you